It's Friday, family, and this is Pastor Flowers here at Transformation Community Church, and this is Friday Drill with Pastor Flowers. And I just want to share a word with you to help us understand our role in this world that we live in. Amen and hallelujah. So the word today is going to come out of Luke 6 and 20, and we're going to title this, Who Are the Poor? And this is what the word says. Blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God. I just want to share with you something from my heart to your heart. Amen and hallelujah. God's concern for the poor is written all over the pages of scripture. Nearly 500 verses in the Bible expresses God's concern for the needy and God's desire to act on their behalf. But, but who are the poor? Oftentimes we ask, who are the poor? Well, they are varied, and the Bible has many different words to describe them. Some people are poor because they have no money or wealth. Some people are poor because they simply depend on others. Some people are poor because they make a poor choice, amen and hallelujah. Some people are poor because of misfortune, and some are poor because of a poor decision that they've made. Most commonly, the poor are those who are oppressed, suffering not only material poverty, but also social poverty from a lack of power and opportunity. They are poor, vulnerable, and weak. Amen and hallelujah. Help me somebody. And I want you to know that God cares for them all. God cares for all of his children. The Bible teaches that God has concern not just for people who are materially poor, but also for those who are down, who are oppressed, who are marginalized, shunned, denied opportunity, and overlooked. Again and again in the Bible, uh, it reveals that God, who shows the poor his tender mercies over and over and over again, offering himself in promises of protection and also provision. Followers of Jesus, that's you and I, followers of Jesus, are called to imitate God's compassion, God's care, and God's mercy, lovingly assisting the poor in whatever ways are required. Whether it's, it means helping others, uh, helping individuals uh, personally, whether that means revitalizing communities, or whether that means uh, creating more just and sustainable jobs for everyone across the world. I love what the Bible says in Galatians 6 and 9, and this is the encouragement, this is the, the promise, this is the encouragement that I wanna leave with you. It says this in Galatians 6 and 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Brothers and sisters, I know things are hard. I know things are tough. And, and I know that we're living in a world that doesn't always want to uh, believe what the word of God says. But I want you to not grow weary in doing good because there is a harvest at the end of all of this. And that harvest is being a kingdom person, being a godly person, and more importantly, seeing God and Jesus in heaven. It's part of our calling. It's part of what we do as believers is that we are supposed to seek and save the lost and we are to help those who need our help. Amen and hallelujah. Help me somebody. Let us pray. Jesus, you bless the poor with your words and your love. Teach us to do the same. It's in Jesus name that we pray. Amen. Come on now, give it up for God. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So brothers and sisters, family, until this time next week, know that I love you. I love you with the bottom from the bottom of my heart. And I also want you to know that God loves you so, so, so much more. So on this weekend and from every day moving forward, make it a purpose just to go out and help someone who is in need. 
Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. So until this time next week, Friday, have a most favored weekend.